Hey, I'm Steve. Welcome back to Retro Tech. Today I've got my 27 inch Sony consumer CRT. Well, you can see it's wide open here. And I figured I'd go ahead and film what I'm doing. Um, I really couldn't stand the way it was looking as far as the convergence in the corners. I wanted to see if there was more I could do. So I am going to fully disassemble the monitor, at least the deflection board. I'm going to show you that now. Um, I've kind of got the back already off which it's really easy to get the backs off these. There's little screw indicators on the back, little arrows to tell you every screw to take out. Then I had the screws out, I took off the video board, and I'm about to remove this board, but I wanted you to see me discharge the TV, and we'll start to take it apart. So let's take a closer look. So I've got the CRT face down. When it's really large like this, it's really easier to work on them when they're face down. I've got my gloves and my discharge tool. It's already connected to the ground point down here where the degauss goes to the frame. And so let's just get in there and just tap under there and discharge this TV. Only reason one hand, and I'm just trying to tap it. I've definitely touched the metal. I can see down there. I'm coming from this side. You hear that? That might have been about the only click we'll get. So it's been discharged. Let's let it sit here for a minute, and we'll come back and do the same procedure again, and then we'll take it apart. Okay, we're back. I'm going to do the discharge sequence again for a second time. It's been sitting here a couple minutes. I'm almost certain it's fine, but just to be safe, sometimes current will build back up in there even after you've discharged it once. It seems to be good. So, definitely on the Trinitrons, the manual says do not use a sharp tool to disconnect the anode cap so it says you basically just got to pinch it and pull it out carefully so you don't damage it so let's go ahead and do that now Okay, it's so kind of a connection together. You don't want to damage it. I'm trying to slip it out. You can see it right there. That's what the thing looks like. Before my, there we go. So we got it out. It's in good shape. That's out. Pull this out, as you can see, it's already come out. And then, I'll just come down here, we can disconnect our board. this Our audio there we go
Now, of course, they have these cords all wrapped around stuff, but for the most part, we've got everything disconnected that we need. And there we have it. There's our board. Now we can take a look at this closer on the workbench and check it out for cap replacement. So this is the board completely taken apart. I just left the power unit in there and then the front control unit in there. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna replace any of the parts in them on this job what we're going to do is we're going to research some of these chips and see if there's even a possibility of RGB and then we'll order I will order all the capacitors um, I've documented every capacitor on here and what it is and uh, we'll replace every single one of them on all these boards then we'll reassemble the TV and we'll check and see how it looks um, in the, we might go ahead and RGB mod it if it's going to be something that's doable but I'm not as concerned with that as I am just doing the cap kit and seeing how much better the picture will look because unfortunately some of these older TVs just don't have the capability to drive RGB easily but that will be research that will be done the next video I'll have will have all the caps in, I'll replace them and I'll show you the board after and then we'll reassemble and we'll go ahead and run it up or we'll go ahead and start it up and test it out. Thanks for watching Retro Tech. Please like, share and subscribe.